Good morning, and thank, thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I'm the COO of uh, DK Hostmaster, uh, which is a registry that's famous, or some would call it infamous, for the business model of being a sole registry. Um, we are also very famous for our validation model. And uh, I think I'll do like uh, Nina here, uh, tell you a story because um, this has been a travel for the registry, and I know it's been a travel for, and a long travel for our registrars too. So uh, I have this presentation who says who's responsible for correct data. Is it the registrant or the registry? As you see, we don't have the registrar included in this, but uh, let's see if we can get to why that is. Well, um, we started this project about data validation of our registrant data. And why is, that, is it that we have introduced a new procedure for uh, data validation of our registrant? Well, there came a, a, a law in 2014 that said that from 1st of March 2015, we were to ensure that if any of our registrants became anonymous in another register, we should ensure that they became anonymous in the WHOIS database. Usually, it was the registrant who was responsible for that. And as a, as a general rule, every registrant is visible in our WHOIS database. And that's uh, in contrary to what you've seen uh, Peter just introduced that no private registrant is visible in the Swedish WHOIS database. We have a law in Denmark saying that we should show every registrant and, um, and it has to include the name the n of the registrant, the actual postal address, and also their phone number. And this is specified in the law. Well, uh, we are uh, normally we were uh, responsible for ensuring anonymity when the registrant said, "I want to be anonymous," not when they became anonymous in another registry uh, register. But this new law said, we have to find out. Um, and this is what this slide is about that we before uh, the law came into action, uh, the registrant was responsible for their own data. They were to ensure that they were updated all the time. We put that in our terms and conditions. And they were to, to say if they want to be anonymous or not. But then uh, um, the business authority had some complaints because the registrants forget. They forget they're in the WHOIS database because they don't look at that all the time. They have registered a domain name 10 years ago. So they forget that they're there. So we had complaints from registrant who suddenly was not anonymous because they were in the WHOIS database, but they were hidden all other registers. So, as I say, the new obligation uh, means that DK Hostmaster has to ensure uh, anonym anonymity when the registrant is or becomes anonymous in the Danish civil registrant system. And that's where all uh, residents in Denmark are registered. So how can we ensure this? Well, we could either do a, a check every day of uh, the Danish civil registration system, or we could subscribe to any changes of our registrant data in the Danish civil registration system. Well, but how do we subscribe? Well, we do that by matching every registrant we have um, uh, that resides in Denmark to the Danish civil registration system, and then you subscribe to the data. In the Danish civil registration system, they also have their very, uh, they, it's a personal number. You have, and in Denmark, 
that consist on, on of your birth date and then four digits. And this is a, a, a number that's uh, it's not uh, public, and you use it for uh, public authorities, you use it for banks, for insurance, but you don't want everyone to know it, because if they have that number, they can uh, do fraud with it. So we don't have that number. We just subscribe to this uh, person with their name and their address. So what is needed in order to ensure uh, our data as it is today? Well, at the moment, we are validating the existing database. We have many years of data in the database. Some doesn't even have their email address uh, listed in the registrant data. We also contact, contact all the registrant uh, that can't be matched. What we did was we ran a match towards the, the Danish business register with all the registrant that were listed as companies. We ran a match uh, through the Danish civil registration system. But we also we had a, a lot of registrant that we couldn't match because if there's a number or a, a, an address spelled differently, there will not be a match. We have tried to make the system not too sensible, but it is very. Uh, it has to be quite uh, like it's listed in in any of these two registers. So what we do now, and we have actually hired. 10 students to work with this uh, all every day. We contact our registrant by email, and that includes a token so they can correct their data. But the problem is we're pushing out a lot of emails to, uh, uh, to addresses that we're not completely sure that, the, that they are the actual registrant anymore. So we can't be too, uh, we can't allow too many changes. So if the name is different, if it's a company and the name is different, and they don't have their uh, business number listed, they actually need to do a transfer of the domain to themselves. And that is uh, causing, of course, a lot of problems because people don't understand this. They, they feel it's uh, tedious and it's uh, difficult. And it is, but it is to protect them against that we are sending someone an email that's not entitled to receive this email. And of course, we could say, well, this is what is in our database. You put it in there yourself. But we try to protect the registrants so we don't have an actual transfer by pushing out these emails. Well, what are the numbers in this system? We have 1.3 million. Uh, we have uh, 750,000 unique user IDs. And as you can see uh, from the handles, there's quite a lot that we have to, to contact. About half of this we are able to match to the uh, actual registers. So, but half of it we have to uh, send out emails and, and do uh, other kind of contact, because we have a, a, an amount of registrant that doesn't have an email. When they don't have an email, we need to uh, actually contact them by letter. And it seems totally ironic that in these internet times, internet days, we're a, a domain name business and people don't have an email, but that's a fact. You can't uh, register today without having an email, but in the early days, we allowed it. So what do we do with the new registrations? Well, the registrar sends in an application. We compare the, the data uh, by name and address towards the two uh, registers we have, the Danish business register or the Danish civil registration system. In the beginning, we had an idea that if it was wrong, we would send uh, an email to the registrar saying, this is not a match, try again. 
and that uh, gave an uproar among the registrars. So we had to change it. So now we accept the applications from the registrars. If there's not a match, we actually contact the registrant saying, you have a mismatch between your data in the different registers and what you put in in the application. So um, we uh, reserve the, the, the domain name for the registrant and, and we send uh, an email with a request to correct the data. They can try, the registrant can try three times. If uh, they fail all three times, they can actually use a system we call NEMED. It's a digital signature. It's not popular with everyone, but it's a very uh, good way to actually ensure that the one filling in the data is the actual registrant because you have the traceability. So um, they can use this as a last resort. It's not a, uh, it's not a demand, but if they fail three times, they need to do that. And they have two months to correct the data. If not, the reservation is canceled. So what are the implications for us? Well, we might lose some registrant because it's too cumbersome. cumbersome sorry. But we get a better data quality. And you have to remember, this was not a choice of ours. This was enforced by uh, the law. This only applies to uh, registrants residing in Denmark. We have no possibilities to check any registrants from other places, other countries at the moment. So these registrants get a letter with uh, if there is any th mismatch. We, we do from time to time have complaints about a registrant whose data is not correct, who's residing in, in another country. And we do contact those. And we also do checks randomly on uh, by, by pers uh, person sits and do those checks. But it's, it's a lot of work and it's, it's quite difficult. But that's, that's how it is. So who's responsible for the correct data? Is it the registrant or the registry? No, according to the new Domain Name Act, it's the registry who's responsible for correct data. And we're actually uh, um, having two demands. One is, of course, we have to ensure that the data is correct, but we also have to ensure the anonymity of the registrant when they become anonymous in another register. And this is the actual focal point here because that's what's giving us a lot of trouble, that you have to be checking all the time because you don't want a registrant to be uh, shown in the WHOAS database for a week if they became anonymous yesterday. We do this once a day. We can't do it uh, more often, but it is uh, a lot of work. And because of this, well, we had to become a lot more strict about the quality of the data we accept and, and actually how we do the validation. Thank you for listening. Any questions? I don't know if there's time for questions. Or yeah, there is time for yeah. questions. Okay. Yeah. They're all quiet. Jan Spiet. <laughs> Hello. Uh, about the token you sent with an email. Yeah. W how does that work? What do you do with a token? It, it it's it's a linked. And so when when he has done something, he puts a token in, and, and then no, you see. No, they push the link, and that's been uh, a complaint too, because a lot of people are nervous about this. Think it's a it's a fraud is mail. They think. Uh, it oh, might be uh, oh. phishing or something. Oh. But so we have to really explain this is an email that's not fraud, that's not phishing. So you, but oh, yeah. yeah, it's a link and then it, it brings you into a, 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 a website that's been built 
to do this correction of the data. Okay, I have a question. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you used uh, this uh, civil registration system and the business checks you can do, you don't get the email, correct? No, we, no. No. Don't get so, the email. And what is your plans in the longer terms to have a valid, I wouldn't say uh, correct, but a valid or accurate email address to the registrant? But that's a, that's a difficult one, because you can have 10 emails. So which one is the one that we should check for? You don't have a, uh, you ha don't have a database for official emails. So, so for me, I, uh, what you could actually do and, and what's been done is that you can have put in my address with another email, and it would validate perfectly but it would be another person who is having the domain name lisa.dk. Yeah. But um, what we actually do, and that's <laughs> it sounds very old-fashioned, is that whenever you are validated not with name ID, the digital signature, we actually send a letter. You registered yeah. this domain name. Hooray, welcome. And that's been done by a physical letter. So we have a registrant saying, oh, I didn't register this one, and then we delete it because it's it's another person uh, registering in your name. If have you had any problems with? I mean, if it's a new registration coming in by a, one of your registrars, and uh, a week later or a couple of days later, mm. sending out this uh, information to the registrant from the registry. The problem that, that could you see this as a fraud or something? O or are, are all the registrants aware of DK Hostmast? Um, no, they're not all aware of DK Hostmast. And it, it does cause problems. And we have registrants who are they uh, 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 registered with one of our registrars, and, and who the hell is DK Hostmast? That is a problem. It is. So actually, we're trying. And, and we're also working with the registrars to say that you should tell them that DK Hostmaster is the registry behind your domain name, so they know that name. And um, we also try to have uh, easy, understandable letters. It's not that I'm saying that we're perfect in this, but we're really working on the language to try and explain it. Okay. Any more questions to Lisa? No? Uh, after next speaker, we will have a short break, and um, during that short break, uh, you can have some refreshments and fill your bags with giveaways. We have a lot of giveaways, and I don't want to take them back to the office, so go bonanza on the giveaway table. <laughs> um,